All right. Welcome to uh, the first of a <clears throat> Focus on Washington Haiku uh, series. The topic this uh, time is uh, Art Plus Haiku. This is the Regional uh, Haiku Society of America activity. So it focuses on uh, Washington uh, poets and uh, artists. And tonight we're doing uh, something uh, I hope is unique. We're presenting uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, 13, uh, 13 uh, artists and poets uh, from the, around the state. So welcome to everyone. Uh, we've had some uh, requests to, to join from uh, outside the US and Canada. So welcome to that. We have some from Seoul and Ron Moss, I think is here from, from uh, Australia and Lakshmi Iyer from India. So this is appropriate for International Haiku Day. So, <clears throat> I have uh, pasted the biographies of the presenters in the chat so you can check them. Uh, each presenter will be uh, presenting for nine minutes. Uh, the program that they present is entirely theirs. Um, <clears throat> we'll have enough time uh, for me to make some introductions, but we will have to save uh, uh, questions and answers and comments to the end. You can also use chat to uh, include your um, questions and comments. Uh, at, <clears throat> at nine, we officially end the meeting, but uh, I will keep the Zoom meeting open for those who want to chat or uh, <clears throat> uh, get reacquainted with old acquaintances. And, uh, and then perhaps if some of the artists and writers uh, stay, <clears throat> uh, then perhaps we can uh, talk with them specifically. Okay, so we'll begin with uh, Sheila Sondick. Let's see, I think she's, oh, here she is, okay. So she's here. Sheila <clears throat> enjoyed reading haiku for decades before beginning to write them in 2010. After attending an evening presentation in Bellingham with Michael Dillon Welch, uh, Chinese literati painters have had the strongest influence on her on her art. Okay, Sheila, it's it's yours. Here I go. <laughs> well, good evening. I've been a visual artist and a writer for most of my life. Since 2009, when I acquired my own etching press, <clears throat> excuse me, I've concentrated on printmaking. I began writing haiku in 2010, as Richard said. I love how these creative threads intertwine and influence each other. The background of this slide is a print created by ro rolling a large inked roller on a plexiglass plate, putting a piece of paper face down on it and running it through the press. The result, which I expected to be completely abstract, turned out to be a lovely winter landscape. As an artist, sometimes the force is with you. I studied Ikebana, Japanese flower arranging, from 2003 to 2008. Our sensei, the best art teacher I've ever had, always knew which part of a student's arrangement to remove to improve its impact. She'd often say, less is more, but not skimpy. This training has had a huge impact on my design sense and is relevant to haiku too. I walked down a wooded hillside to commute from my house to my studio. This haiku and monotype were composed independently, but share the same subject matter. Uh, bold, sorry, lost my place for a minute. Boulder etched with sword fern shadow, studio path. 
the main way I've been combining haiku and visual art in these last three years is in New Year's postcards called Nengajo in Japan, where the post office facilitates their delivery on January 1st, if you can imagine that. I joined a group of North American haiku poets exchanging cards in the year of the tiger. I was able to find Mrs. Grossman's tiger stickers on the internet and to my delight discovered that they worked very well on my already printed art note cards. Each recipient got a unique card that year. A tiger roars into the wind, New Year's Day. Here are um, two more of those cards. These prints were uh, based on the eroded Chuckanut sandstone at Larrabee State Park on Chuckanut Drive in Bellingham. I found interesting compositions in details of the sandstone. I was thrilled to find that they took on monumental proportions in my prints. I don't find myself drawn to grand vistas as subjects for my art. And I find a parallel in the everyday near at hand content and subjects of haiku. Eroded sandstone, my empty spaces. This is the only haiku I've written about those chucking up formations. The next year was the year of the rabbit. And this, this card began with a print, one of my prints in the background, also from the Larrabee series. But this is a larger print created by overlapping and masking out parts of several eight by 10 etching plates. The rabbit is my interpretation of a rabbit from a 12th century Japanese scroll of animals engaged in sports and games. We have a 1954 children's book a library discard, which reproduces the entire scroll. I love sharing this book with our two daughters, one of whom is listening in from Sydney right now. New Year's Day, resolving again to hop to it. This year is the year of the dragon. I'd been very interested in dragons in my early 20s, and I was able to find a woodcut at that I'd made at that time. I wanted to give it more contrast for the postcard, however. So I used the paint bucket tool in Photoshop, clicked on the dragon's body, and was relieved that the black went just where I'd hoped. I did a bit more digital drawing on the feet, and it was ready to fly. An ancient dragon enters the fray, New Year's Day. Although I haven't published any haiga where I've composed both parts, other people have contributed art for my haiku. I was thrilled when Ron Moss, and a big shout out that he's here, that's wonderful, of Tasmania, chose my haiku to illustrate in the March 2014 issue of the much mourned online journal, 100 Gourds. Half a melon, one side of his face smiles. Thank you, Ron, again. My friend, Anita Boyle, a poet and artist who lives on Acreage in Whatcom County, came to dinner one night and presented me with this large postcard. The, the haiku on it is Virginia Rail, the voice of the mud itself. Somehow she managed to illustrate the sound of that elusive bird without showing a bird at all. The image she used is a photograph from the beloved pond on her property. I'm also fortunate that Jan Kadrescu, a Romanian poet and artist, included this piece based on my haiku in his book of Haiga, The Wanderer Brush. I love the motion in Jan's calligraphic drawing. A male spider touches her web. The dance begins. I made quilts with personalized imagery for each of my daughters when they were young teens. Looking back on this experience recently, I wrote this haiku. 
The quilts I made for my daughters, flying geese. Mm. Here's another Year of the Tiger card. The background image is from a series of prints I did of a vigorous patch of Pedicytes japonicus, common name butterbur, fuki in Japanese, which grows untended in my neighborhood. Thank you for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing everyone else's artwork in haiku. Okay. Okay, thank you, she Sheila, especially for volunteering to go first. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. Carol McCurry is an, also volunteered to go first, but uh, she didn't volunteer fast enough, so she ends up <laughs> going second. So Carol McCurry resides in Point Roberts, Washington. And for those of you who know, that uh, <clears throat> peninsula is uh, borders the Canada, but does not border the United States, even though it's a, a city in the United States. So when she goes to the US, she has to go through Canada if she drives or take a ferry or boat. <clears throat> she is the author of In the Company of Crows, Haiku and Tonka Between the Tides from Black, Black Cat Press in 2008 and uh, second printing in 2018. Also, uh, <clears throat> The Tang of Nasturtiums, an award-winning e-chapbook from Snapshot Press. Uh, you can access that on Snapshot Press website and read that one for free. Uh, photo photography is her passion, and she's never without her camera. Okay, so, Carol, you... Yeah, thanks, Richard. Yeah, thanks a lot. Um, I wanted to go second because I'm I, I, I'm a wannabe painter and sumier artist, but I have to settle for photography. I swear if I came back as another life, I would want to be um, a marine ecologist or an entomologist or any science that involves flora and fauna, because I, I love to zoom in on things. I'm amazed by what I discover, like this six-legged uh, starfish, a uh, sea star. They have five legs, and so it's kind of an anomaly and a, a, an unusual event to find. But I'm always peeking under rocks and through algae and seaweed, and uh, I'm creeping up on wildlife and looking for objects and things that are happening that uh, have a wabi-sabi feel. Um, I've used my photos for over 25 journals and anthology covers, and several of my photos have been used as illustrations for chapbooks. I've enjoyed creating multimedia slideshows. This isn't one, um, uh, but I also like to make cards and um, postcards as well, as well as greeting cards. And I've had a little show where I sold some of my framed uh, photography and Haiga as well. I also um, use my photos for um, haiku prompts or poetry prompts. I've done that now for the last five years at the Haiku Foundation for the Haiku Dialogue. So I have a lot of uh, interesting things I can do with my photos. The hardest thing I find to do is haiga because I find my photos, I'm so emotionally attached. I've had a little aha moment and I almost don't wanna put text on them. So I find that quite difficult to do um, but I have done them and I've published the ones I'm going to show today. A few of them have been published or shown in um, previous slideshows. Um, I try and leave space when I'm framing my uh, images so that in case I want to add a poem at some point in the future. Um, the first two Haiga that open up the show are collaborations. Um, all the others are my own photos and my own um, haiku. So I would like to just sit back and let you watch this show without me doing anything except reading it once, and then it'll there'll be enough time for you to read each um, haiku your own in your own time and uh, engage with the photo. So I'll start right now. Okay, slideshow from beginning. Harsh words all but forgotten, snow on snow. Mm. 
That's Terry Hale French. My photo, her haiku. Winter retirement, out of life, out of one life into another. That was Terry Hale's image, my haiku. Lifting fog, discovering I am not alone. <laughs> Waiting for a feather to fall, nesting season. Well-worn path, I take my memories for a walk. Stargazing, the heron's cry ripens the night. Lost again, the tumbleweed and I part ways. A lesson in living the edge, mountain goat. Plein air, painting the blues of the blowfly. Perseids, oh, the weight of all those wishes. Ides of March, the old crow drinks with its shadow. Starlit night, a sand crab comes out of hiding. Floodwaters, dreams sink deeper into the mud. Comfort in knowing it's there, the dark side of the moon. Heat wave, the horse blinks away and that's life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In full bloom, spilling rain, spilling itself. The whiteness of calla lilies, was I ever that pure? A tide pool, a tiny flatfish circles its world. Lost among the stars, the hawks cry. Between inhale and exhale, a blossom falls. Night jasmine, searching for our favorite constellation. Hospice, the lightness of being behind a shoji. Solar eclipse, knowing I'll miss the next one. That's it. Thank you. Okay.
Okay, a great start. <clears throat> Just a, a note uh, <clears throat> on some Japanese terms. Haiga is the term generally used for painting, usually sumi painting combined with uh, poetry uh, like tank or haiku. A more recent development term is uh, shahai, <clears throat> which uh, refers to the photograph used instead of the painting. Uh, our presentation tonight includes both types, but also goes far beyond that to include all kinds of uh, art combined with poems in, in some way. Okay, so next we're going to uh, look at uh, and hear from Emily Kane. She is a member of the Puget Sound Sumi Artists and its subgroup, Haiga Adventure. Emily will show and read Haiga from the latest Haiga Adventure chapbook and collaborative Haiga, Haiga from uh, the Commencement Bay Haiku 10-year anthology, uh, This Morning's Tides. Okay. So it's all yours, Emily. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Let's see if I can get this right technically. Uh... Sorry. Okay, here we go. Um, thank you for the introduction. I'm, I'm primarily a, a painter more than a, a writer. I'm also a member of uh, Seattle Co-Arts and Women Painters of Washington. So I'm going to show you um, collaborative work exhibiting different mediums for the, the images. The images are mine and the poems are from uh, various different haiku poets. So first off, um, can you see that okay? Mm -hmm. got mm -hmm. There we go. Yes. This is the, the cover of the 2023 Haiga Adventure Study Group chapbook done uh, by the Puget Sound Sumi artist for exhibit at the um, see, at the fall Seabat getaway of the Haiku Northwest Society. It's a, it's a small group. Sometimes there's only six, six to 12 of us at the meetings. And we are all Sumi artists. So here is a haiku by Kathy Tashiro. Crescent arch of breaching whale, scent of spray. Crescent arch of breaching whale, scent of spray. And I was inspired by this to do some whale paintings, many, many whale paintings. And this one turned out to be the, the most expressive to go with for the haiga here. And it's traditional Sumi ink, which is very unlike India ink. If you're interested in painting with, with black ink, you want to definitely use the Chinese and Japanese and Korean inks. They're made from pine soot and they will not hurt your brushes. India ink will destroy your brushes. It's very chemical. Forgive me, I'm a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> and here we have the cover of the 19, or 2022 anthology by the Commencement Bay Haiku Group. Richard heads that up. And there again, it's a small group. And there are about 19, I think, I think it's 19 poets and several artists in this book. It is available from lulu.com online. It's 119 pages, I think, and it's about $17. Here's some examples from it. Again, traditional Sumi. Old Scarecrow gives his heart to the blackbirds. Old Scarecrow gives his heart to the blackbirds. Here we have some different mediums with a haiku by Aiden Castle, who is here tonight. A new parent, congratulations. Day moon, our shoes dangling from power lines. Day moon, our shoes dangling from power lines. And here there's some nice 
connections. It's it's not as literal as Samhaiga. We have the connection of the dangling, of course, and then the colors. The, the editor had fun with the font, putting the, the colors from the painting into the font. This is a woodblock print. I don't know if you can see me on the side here, but here is the woodblock itself. It looks quite different and darker than the, the prints. Each color is done separately, is printed separately. So it's a very intensive, intensive medium. Then on the right, Haiku by Bill Fay. Grandma's Beach House, the screen door to my childhood. Grandma's Beach House, the screen door to my childhood. We have three links here. We have the, the beach items and the beach house in the poem. Then we have the turquoise, the color of the font and the rope on the glass ball. And then the editor put in the, the ropey font, which echoes the, the rope of the, the strings around the, the glass ball. So you can have all different types of links and connections and jumps. Haiga does not need to be have a literal connection. You don't have to have a crow because you mentioned crow or blackbird. Frog pond song plucked on a one string bass. Frog pond song plucked on a one string bass. By Bill Fay. This is a traditional Western style watercolor, different from the Asian watercolors on Arches 140 pound weight watercolor paper. The painting's about 16 by 20, something like that. And then a haiga um, for the painting and the poem done by myself, more literal. Scattered on the shore, free of smoke, sandpipers go airborne. Scattered on the shore, free of smoke, sandpipers go airborne. Lastly, this is an October poem because it is going to be in the next chapbook done by the Puget Sound Sumi Artists Haiga Adventure Group. And it will be presented at the 2024 Seebeck Getaway of Haiku Northwest, which will be mid late October. I'm, I'm not sure of the dates on that. And this is a poem about a man trying to sleep and the full moon is shining on his face. Take off on rain, rain, go away. October moon, 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 go away. October moon, 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 go away. Traditional Sumi on, on rice paper. I chose this one because we just had the eclipse and I was painting the moon in various phases. And there's a nice um, seal down here at the bottom, a chop carved by Yuming Zhu from Woodenville. And he is also a member of Puget Sound Sumi artists. So I tried to keep mine brief and thank you very much. I, I appreciate this opportunity. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, so David Berger, Berger is an artist and writer. His books include Betty Alexander, The Music in Us, artworks of mid and late career, as well as University of Washington Press release, uh, Razor Clamps, Buried Treasure of the Pacific Northwest. He recently showed dragon theme paintings at the Uamru Art Center in Bellevue. He lives in Seattle and is young enough to still be learning things the hard way. Hey, uh, David, it's your time to shine. Thank you, Richard. You can see everything okay and hear me okay? Yes. 
-hmm. Great. Well, thank you. It's great to see everybody's work and looking forward to seeing the rest of the presentations tonight. So I uh, work with both words and images, and this presentation will cover some things that I've been thinking about or doing in the last couple of years. This happens to be a slightly older one, and I do think about how words and poems are combined on the page in the Asian tradition, but also in the Western tradition. When you go to the museum, well, you see people running up to the placard to read the title. And so the titles are often very important as well. In this case, the title of this piece is Cat at the Moment of Enlightenment. <laughs> <laughs> so I apologize, this slide, slide is slightly out of focus. Um, I do do regular meditation, or at least try to. Volume on your computer. That's where? In the where would that be? Home. It's not up there. Can you see it? Well, on mine, it's always kind of. Did somebody have a question, or do we no, need to? No, Gail Workman needs to mute, and I think she just did. Okay. The emptiness of the meditation hall, the taste of sour rye, <clears throat> and you can see the images of bell ringer. Uh, so here is a more, uh, that one was, and this one too, a more, if you will, conventional haiga where there is a poem and an image on one page. This uh, was initially a one line poem, but for this uh, image, I put it on two lines. It's a fairly large painting. It's about uh, three feet wide. Smooth in my hand, the stone's long journey. And that poem was uh, published in First Frost. So, Sometimes the poem comes first, sometimes the images come first. Uh, in this case, I can't quite remember, but I do think the uh, poem came first, or maybe they came at the same time, but I do think they more or less came first, Came the poem came first. Camping in the mountains of Idaho, moonlight for dessert. And that's a 16 by 16 Sumi painting. So I do do a lot of hiking and exploring in nature and fishing and whatnot. And one of the most fun things that I've done in Washington state is to go for hood canal or spotted shrimp. And the first time I pulled one up from uh, hood canal, I looked at this shrimp. It was just so beautiful. And I thought to myself, I don't know whether to reach for the chopsticks or the sumi brush. But I've re reached for both. Uh, this this poem, things I know about spot shrimp, carapace bristles with armaments and sensing gear, spends a few years of maturity as males, then become females. Large compound eyes sit on stalks, found in the Salish Sea at around three hundred feet, where I drop pots to catch them. Wow. Uh, this is a detail I, I've done for the uh, Zodiac year. I always do the animals. It's great fun to do the animals in different ways. But I just did a close-up of some of the seals that I use uh, on the different works. I have about a dozen. The one on the upper left is from one of my own drawings. And the cat silhouette on the left. Oh yeah, I included a painting from uh, the year of the rabbit. We've got a couple of rabbits, I guess, tonight. Uh, this is a large painting, I think uh, four foot wide and three foot tall acrylic. And uh, I mean, it isn't a poem, but it does have n numbers in it. So it has other kinds of um, content.
Uh, this is another fairly large piece. I've been doing life drawing in the last couple of years again, and I quite enjoy it. And bringing the figure and the words together is a bit of a challenge, and I'm still kind of working out how to, that might be done. Uh, in this case, the poem was added to the drawing, and then the drawing was kind of reworked with color and whatnot. Nothing left but the warm teacup between us. Nothing left but the warm teacup between us. So this is also, these are, uh, as I said, chronological roughly. So now moving in more into the last few months. And I was kind of inspired by the Japanese idea of kintsugi, which is uh, repairing broken pottery vessels with gold. And so the repair becomes as important or more important than the, uh, than the uh, object itself. And uh, so I've been ripping up drawings and reassembling them. And then there's usually some words added, not poems, not haiku per se, but just some words. And this one, I, I don't know if it's cut off, it's cut off on the top of mine, but she tried to smile. And this is another one from that series as well. Reality becomes memory, cherry blossoms again. That's wonderful. Oh, thank you. And I wanted to be sure to show not only female nudes. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thank you, David. It was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so we're next moving to Ann Spires. She will be uh, working with Inchon E and uh, Molinas Frank. So Ann Spires, based on Washington Island, Washington, has haiku published in Kingfisher, Mayfly. Aaron's Nest, Frog Pond, Modern Haiku, and other journals and anthologies. She is a, she is a member of Haiku Northwest, as well as Vashon's Monday at 3 monthly haiku meeting. Her interest in haiku stems from exploring Northwest Issei haiku and history. And visit annspears.com uh, or email spears at spires at centratel.net. Inchon E <clears throat> taught applied linguistics at Penn State and uh, University of Wisconsin Eau Claire. She is currently based in Seoul, Korea. Uh, she's uh, doing uh, Korean translations of Anne's uh, haiku. Uh, for some reason, haiku has got very little, uh, not even a toehold in uh, Korean. So maybe this will launch haiku in Korea, who knows. So, and then uh, <clears throat> Seattle-born artist Bolinas Frank is based in Seoul, Korea. His artwork is in private collections in Europe, Asia, and America with notable shows in Seattle and Seoul. He illustrated each quatrain in Anne Spire's poetry book, Rain Violent from Empty Bowl Press with the international weather symbols. So email uh, bo at bofrank.com or visit uh, bofrank.com. Okay, uh, Anne and Incho and, and Molina. Thank you, yours. Richard. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for the invitation to do this. Our presentation, which I'll show in a, in a moment, has five slides, a haiku in English by me, a translation from English to Korean by Injo, and Ng Jo, say hello. Hello. There she is. <laughs> and um, and a, a visual illustrating the haiku by Belina Sprague. Bo is here someplace. Hello all. So, here I am. Okay. Good. <laughs> uh, 
So um, I'd like first, before we, we look at the, at, the, at, the, at the show, to have Ingo tell us something about the challenge of translating haiku from English to Korean. Oh, okay. Um, uh, the most challenging thing was to um, find the words and phrases that have same or similar like imagery implications and connotations. Um, so for example, tea house, tree house, that was really difficult to translate because we don't have that same kind of thing existing in Korea. So I had to find the next to the closest one. And uh, um, the other one was, of course, the name of uh, plants that don't exist in Korea. So I just had to use um, English words for it. And Bo, tell us something about the images. Yeah, so um, in traditional haiku, there is always something that references seasons. And I was fortunate enough this spring to go outside and draw the plum blossoms on site. And it was very educational in that while drawing, I learned asking the admirers how to differentiate cherry blossoms from plum blossoms. And uh, one way is to look at the blossom construction or the sepals. And with plum blossoms, the sepals are this dark brick red, and uh, which has a nice contrast with the white popcorn-like plum blossoms. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, Richard, uh, what's happening is that someone else has brought up their shared screen. Mm -hmm. I stopped them. So you should okay. be able to do yours. So I'm gonna go. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to new share. I'm working on this. Uh, so I'm gonna stop share and start over again. Ah, here we go. So honoring the International Haiku Day 2024. Okay. Flowers, words, ink, and paint. We nothing don't see showing. Any, nothing showing. Okay. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Okay, we're starting over. And, and and the other share is off, right, Richard? Yes. Okay. There you go. Okay, good. Here we go. Okay. All right. I'm going to start all over. Honor International Haiku Day 2024. Flowers, words, ink, and paint. Haiku by Ann Spires. Korean translation by Angel Lee, art by Bolina Spring. I unzip my coat. Ocean spray loosens its funky flowers. Hot zipper를 내리네. Ocean spray 관목이 냄새 나는 꽃을 늘어뜨리네. Home from the ocean, finding another blue sea. Iris opening. 바닷가에서 집으로 가니 또 다른 푸른 바다 각시 불꽃이 피네 shorter stems sweet peas and heat 
dog days. 짧은 줄기를 가진 더위 속의 달콤한 콩들, 천랑성들. The tree house floats in desks unscrolling. Plum blossoms. 나무 위에 오두막이 달려 있네. 이른 어둠이 펼쳐지는데 매화꽃이 피네. I trowel weeds as a tree frog retreats through the creeping buttercup. 잡초들을 캐내네 청개구리는 돌아가네 미나리 아제비를 해집고 Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So, <clears throat> uh, let's see, Susan. Okay, I see Susan. So Susan Lee Roberts, a Washington native, is a seven-year haiku poet who recently returned to Washington State. Since her return, uh, she has ventured into Haiga and Shahai. Uh, for her, for her images demand a haiku to be written, but occasionally a haiku tugs at her until she finds the right image. Her haiga have appeared in contemporary haibun online, daily haiga, and scarlet dragonfly journal. Okay, it's, Susan, you're up. All right, well, thank you. Um, I've been a writer most of my life uh, and I've only really recently delved into haiga, which I love. And um, I never touched a paintbrush, maybe besides grade school, until about uh, 18 years ago, in my 50, early 50s. And uh, I, I do pretty good. This is not a pretty good one, but this is one of my things, one of my paintings. Um, I love, this is the first Haiga that I ended up doing. I had just moved back to uh, Washington State and I uh, was out and we were camping in our yard because we couldn't move into our house yet because we were going to do some remodeling. I was out pulling weeds and all the neighbors would come by. You know, we were the new kids on the block. So all the neighbors were coming by and chatting with us. And I thought, how weird, because from a big city, big cities that I'm from, nobody ever did that. So by the time I finished weeding and went back in the house, this poem just came out at me. And then, um, uh, and then my body said, look in your pictures, look in your pictures, see if there's a picture that goes with it. And I thought, well, okay, but I had nothing to mind. But I found this one. And when I put them together, it's like I painted the picture for the haiku, which I did not. But um, this is still one of my favorite ones because I still can feel that day I was out in my first week in Montesano pulling weeds. Oops. Um, this is one of my favorites. I've studied children's literature for years. And so when I see a scene like this, we were just driving down the street in, in I think Elma and I saw it and we went past it. And then I said, stop the car. And then we backed up, got out, took the picture left and it turned out okay. So I, I took me a while, but I put together a haiku this Sunday. Cars slow for wildlife. Uh, wintry, waning light pinks the purple sky. Wintry, waning light pinks the purple sky. And the artwork is done by my daughter-in-law, Lindsay Roberts. First art class. Cracked driveway 
becomes masterpiece. First art class, cracked driveway becomes masterpiece. And this particular Haiga all happened from inspiration to getting it accepted all happened within a two week period, which kind of blew me away. But this is one of those, by the time I got home from my morning walk, the haiku was written. <laughs> Some of them come easy, most of them do not. <laughs> Winter, cranky winds rattle the windows. Winter, cranky winds rattle the windows. Reclaimed wood. The flute maker counts his flutes. Reclaimed wood. The flute maker counts his flutes. My husband is a flute maker and he plays them. And he's like a kid in the candy shop when he sees wood. So <laughs> that haiku came early, quickly too. Sunlight parades downstream. Cheers from flickering grasses. Sunlight parades downstream. Cheers from flickering grasses. Road trip. Sudden blizzard in the Pyrenees. Road trip. Sudden blizzard in the Pyrenees. In this picture is actually a picture of dewdrops on the grass. And I love that picture since forever. And when this haiku came about, it's like, okay, you guys are a match. Elders Meadow, the wishes left to wish. Elders Meadow, the wishes left to wish. Hillside by the creek, my son's gift. Hillside by the creek, my son's gift. Autumn aging into winter, a vibrant frost. Autumn aging into winter, a vibrant frost. Autumn's first frost, witches cackle. Autumn's first frost, witches cackle. Ancestors, century of light cast upon me. Ancestors, centuries of light cast upon me. I think that's all. Oh. So. <laughs> hey, thank you so much. Hey. <clears throat> so far, most of you have not taken the full nine minutes allotted to you, but it's our loss. <clears throat> okay, uh, Dorothy is next. So Dorothy Avery Matthews currently resides in Poles Bowl, Washington. She has studied created and displayed various forms of art in California, Oregon, and Washington. She owned a gallery in Corvallis, Oregon, representing 150 artists and crafts, craft workers. Since 2011, Dorothy has staged and presented Haiga from Haiga Adventure annually at Haiku Northwest Seabeck Haiku Getaway. Okay, Dorothy, it's your time. Can you see my screen? Yes. All right, let me get rid of this little bar here. Can you increase your volume? Um, oh. Is that better? Yes. Okay, all right. Well, it looks like we lost, I lo whoops. Let me get this back up here. 
I do want to say that I'm very happy to be invited to this event, and I'm very glad to be here, thanks to the help of my little brother, Jimmy. And um, I wanted to, to let people know a little bit about the Haiga Adventure Group. It's part of the Puget Sound Sumi Artists uh, it, that's based in Tacoma, Washington. And uh, the Puget Sound Sumi Artists and our Haiga Adventure Group was started by uh, or co-founded by Fumiko Kamura. And I've got one of her paintings here and uh, toward the we lost her last year, but toward the end of her life, she uh, created nature collages and her daughter took pictures of them. Then the Haiga Adventure Group each wrote a haiku based on the picture and sent it to Fumiko. So we were glad to sh uh, share her uh, last time of uh, enjoying art with her. So let's see here. Um, we worked on what is haiku, how to how to take how to do it, uh, what the rules were, and so on for a number of years, until finally we decided that we needed to publish something. And so, with the help of um, Kathy Tashiro organizing us and uh, and giving us deadlines, which were were not changeable, and Sally Penley who did all the, the extensive graphics and production, we started create by creating some tiny books. And hopefully Sally will show you some of those uh, later on. Now in this, um, in this slideshow, I'm going to sh uh, show a lot of work that I don't read, but um, I'll have some kind of comments about each show and hopefully the type is big enough so that you can, uh, that you can see it. After the, um, see, I need to get rid of this little black bar for you. Okay. Um, after we had done that first publishing, um, Emily Kane decided that we needed to have a real chapbook. So in 2022, we created the Red Onion, and that was a, a six set of, of um, Tan Ranga little chapbook. And the painting of the heron is from me and the painting of the dragonflies is from Emily. And our two poems are uh, down below for you to see. And then last year we were encouraged by the response we got. So last year we did a, a full blown chapbook. It was 46 pages and all the artists on the side were represented and it was a wonderful group um, kind of thing to, to do. Uh, and anybody that is in a group and uh, wants to wants to really get people together, uh, do some publishing together. It's, it's really fun. I'm really interested in the myths and legends of, uh, of people all around the world. And especially here on the West Coast, we've lived in uh, all three states, Washington, Oregon, and California, and been involved in art and um, various kinds of poetry uh, in each of those states. And so when the eclipse came, uh, um, the last eclipse came, and it was here, um, I wrote this haiku and painted this painting based on the uh, legend that when the white raven comes, there will be peace it will be bring people peace and bring us out of darkness into light. I think that's kind of a good idea to hold on to. So this is one of the largest paintings that, that I've done. Most of them I can paint in my lab. So um, during our moves, we ended up in um, Corvallis and that's where, I mean, I'm sorry, we ended we ended up in Washington, and that's where I started working with Sumi painting and Shoto, which is Japanese um, calligraphy. Puget Sound Sumi Artist provides that for all of its members. And uh, the 
instructor we had at the time encouraged us, even though we were not proficient at the at the shoto, to uh, add it to our to our paintings and create haiga that way. So that that is what this one is. And this is from an experience when we were moving from uh, Bainbridge Island, Washington, to Paulsbow, Washington. And a little bird was out in my bird bath just having the best time. So golden crowned sparrow splashes in my bird bath. Existential, existential joy. Got the wrong thing here. Wait, I'm back. Okay, um, so I've enjoyed writing Haiga uh, correctly or pretty correctly for uh, since 2011 when we started up with Hi the Haiga Adventure Study Group. And I'm currently um, trying to learn uh, haiku comics from David Lasky. This is a, my most recent um, Haiga it with that technique and I really like it because you're able to use more than uh, more than one image so with a haiku that that has a lot of meaning that's a really good way to work uh, the previous slide was for spring and the my set of slides has the four seasons this is summer with the uh, with a shoto again a Japanese calligraphy using the Sosho style, which is more complicated than the kanji style for the, the bird bath. But it is um, it is also challenging and very fun to work with. So um, the, the style itself is going to outlive me, but while I'm around, I'm going to keep working at it. So, and I've used that as the image uh, for my haiku. Tired of rainy skies, I pack my plein air airbag Art outdoors pending. Okay, and the next season should be. Oh, I keep going backwards. Sorry. It's autumn. And on this slide, I've used the same haiku for for two haiga images. And that is to remind me and to remind others if you get a really good haiku that is just pregnant with images, go ahead and do more than one using the same um, poem. The last season I'm showing is winter and um, crows returning to check out a plum tree is a um, is a prompt in in some Japanese paintings. And I'm here to tell you that in Paul's Bow, the crows come in the winter and examine all the little twigs on my plum tree in the backyard. And then they come back for two days in August and eat all the plums. And Haiga with Care, this slide is, is um, to just to let you know and to encourage all of you that if you're artists and, and you like to do, you like to paint and you like to do haiku, think about doing things that will that will impact what goes on in our world, even if they're little things like making a postcard that reminds people to vote. And I'll have a bunch of these at CBEC this year to give out if anybody wants to come and say hi. And my last slide is made from um, a, a photograph that my husband took on a photo trip to China and he just got this wonderful wonderful little pig that I did with sumi painting and a digital black background and this this little thing is to remind us all to keep smiling and especially if you're in a crowd and there are people around that are looking really grumpy you might change their whole day with a little smile and so um, keep on smiling, and I'm hoping to see you at CBEC or at on sumi.org, which is the Puget Sound Sumi Artist website. Thank you. Should be able to end this show. And stop sharing. And go back to it.
Okay, Dorothy, you need to hit uh, stop share at okay. the top. Oh, I, I did. Let's uh, see. I need to get back in the meeting. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, well, I stopped it for you. Thank you. Okay, so thank you. So, uh, <clears throat> Dorothy used the term tonenga at the beginning. Just a short explanation. That's a <clears throat> usually two poem uh, link, linked verse. Mm -hmm. One person gives the first link of uh, in traditionally in Japanese three. Three parts, five, seven, five, and then someone answers or responds with a uh, seven, seven uh, verse. And the two are linked, but typically not by uh, uh, content or uh, uh, a close link. So as far as I know, Dorothy and Emily were the first to ever try painting Tanranga. So that was a very first, interesting experiment. First in our group anyway. <laughs> I don't know that it's been done elsewhere. It might, it might have. So, Okay, so uh, we'll uh, turn to John Burgess. John Burgess has six books of poetry from Ravenna Press, including his latest, Punk Poems Complete, each with an increasing number of illustrations, charts, and comics. He is working on a history of poetry comics. You can see more at punkpoet.net. Okay, John, it's, you're up. Thank you. Thanks, Richard. Thanks to all of you for tuning in tonight. Appreciate it. Well, I'm John Burgess. I've been writing poetry since I was in high school in the 70s. I started writing haiku in 1983. Um, more recently in 2010, I started adding maps and diagrams to my poems. And that was as a way to provide context for my poetry. Around that same time, I was introduced to poetry comics by my, uh, my teacher, David Lasky, who's also Dorothy's teacher now, I hear. So, uh, and we'll see uh, David's work later this evening. Um, but, uh, that introduction to poetry comics in 2010 has led me to um, pop, uh, haiku comics, which I've been exploring since then. Uh, my first haiku comics are based on four frames, and that made a lot of sense to me. It was a visual way to create a pause or a cut, kind of a kireji uh, substitute. Yeah, for the and the haiku. Old man at the beach, relentless waves wash away the place where he stands. Cruel reminder, cherry blossoms in my face. Nothing's forever. Day lingers so long in Cascadia summer, waiting for the end. There's a silence, nothing left to talk about after the storm passes. Sunday afternoon, I fall asleep in the hammock. And then um, last fall, I started to explore three panels, uh, haiku 
are, um, at least in English, are five, seven, five, three lines. So I started exploring um, three panel um, haiku comics. Um, my first set was inspired by reading a new translation of Basho by um, the one that came out last year or the year before by Andrew Fitzsimons. And so uh, it was a series called Reading Basho. And um, the images, the cartoon drawings, are based on a Basho poem. But I added my own haiku and uh, to see if we could intersect meaning with the image. So this first one of uh, the drawing is based on Basho's haiku, clouds drift apart, friends separate for now, wild geese fly away. Uh, my haiku, morning clouds and friends go their separate ways. Reading Basho. And another example, uh, the drawing based on Basho's famous haiku. On a leafless bough, a crow perches and pauses the end of autumn. And then uh, my haiku. I keep wondering what I lost in translation, reading Basho. And then um, new this year, I continue to explore three panel um, haiku comics, but I put them in comic strip, more like what you see in the daily newspaper to make them more, to make sure to really drive home the comic part of the haiku comics. And so I have some examples, recent examples from that series. No trees in our backyard, just neighbors leaves. Uh, the drawing is, is based on a map of the Israeli bombings in the Gaza Strip. Dark days, the battles continue. Old Crow, you too still complain. That's my show. My homepage is at punkpoet.net. You can um, uh, read more about my poetry books. I have a I blog there. I've been working on a history of poetry comics um, in blog format there. I, I do post occasionally my uh, haiku comics on Instagram, um, at punkpoet. And if you have a chance this month, uh, David Lasky and I co-curated uh, an exhibit, exhibition of haiku comics. It's at the Punch Gallery in Thorpe, Washington, uh, each Saturday during April. Um, there's 23 poet artists with 69 uh, haiku comics on display. So it, it's, a, it's a great show if I say so myself. So thank you. Where is Thorpe, Washington? <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's off I-90. Um, just before Ellensburg, they, they have the fruits. Oh, I think they're famous the for fruit the for fruit stand. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is it at the, uh, enormous fruit stand that's, uh, by the highway? No, Where it's just, players? just into town, just a little ways past that, Le okay. less than a mile past that, okay. right, right in town. You can't miss the gallery. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. So, <clears throat> Uh, so next, uh, Petro C.K. was born in Germany, but uh, <clears throat> currently lives among the emerald greenery in Seattle. Since undertaking writing as a late stage endeavor a few years ago, he has had 
hundreds of haiku and other verses, a place in dozens of esteemed journals. He has a collection of experimental haiku and a collection of Dada poetry coming out in the next uh, couple of months. Okay, Petro, it's all yours. All right. Well, I must say that's a tough act to follow. I really enjoyed uh, John's work uh, for sure. So um, like I said earlier, I've only been writing for uh, a couple of years now. And before that, I was uh, deeply involved in visual arts of all sorts, uh, particularly with illustration and cartooning. So the, learning about the idea of haiku comics is uh, particularly very interesting for me. So I'm going to have to really uh, buckle down and learn some more about that. So I look forward to uh, learning more about this and, uh, and for David's uh, presentation too. It sounds uh, really up, up my alley. So I look forward to that. Um, but uh, anyway, so I, in the years prior to writing, I've done a lot of photography. So um, mu much of what you'll see is uh, my photos. Uh, but then there's also some collaborative works that I've done uh, with others. Uh, so this is a not a very cohesive presentation, so you'll have to uh, forgive the uh, um, the non-professionalism of my of my uh, uh, of this presentation. So, uh, but let's just continue forward. So this is my uh, first one. This is the uh, a photograph that I took of uh, of my neighbor's house. New neighbors, their faces at night flicker. New neighbors, their faces at night flicker. This one is an image that I uh, took from the news. So it's not my image. It's not anyone else's image that I know of uh, that I can credit to, but uh, I am interested in a lot of uh, using, uh, tying in socio-political uh, current events into, into haiku. And so this is one verse uh, that jumped out at me uh, uh, when the uh, wildfires were, uh, or when the fires were going on in uh, Hawaii uh, months back. Last resort, jumping into the ocean to escape wildfires. Last resort jumping into the ocean to escape wildfires. Mm -hmm. So this next one is from, uh, it's a, um, a project that is from uh, Complete the Haiga. It's, uh, if you're on Twitter, you may have seen these uh, images uh, float around. Uh, this is a project by uh, by Hosea, who uh, happens to uh, be here. Uh, he lives in Seattle as well, so he has joined us here tonight as well. So, uh, so I really uh, love all the different images and the way that other people have been uh, their verses and the way that they complete the same image. It's really interesting to see how other people uh, take different views of the same image. So mine is blackened sun. The egret carefully steps through the oil slick. Blackened sun. The egret carefully steps through the oil slick. This next one is a a uh, a response to the classic verse by. Uh, Kobayashi Isa, uh, his verse was, O oh, snail, climb Mount Fuji, but slowly, slowly. So mine as a response is, O oh, snail, how brief the summit before the journey down. O oh, snail, how brief the summit before the journey down. So if you want to follow, uh, complete the high God, these, here's some information here. Uh, you can uh, follow along. I definitely uh, encourage you to, uh, to participate. It's, uh, it really is a lot of fun. So much like how uh, the uh, core Van der Heuvel's uh, Tundra 
haiku really stretches the boundaries of what can be considered haiku. I decided to create this as a way to stretch the uh, possibilities of what it can be considered haiga. Again, this is just simply a white square, but then therein that is part of the image uh, where you have just the single word penguin. So this is another, coming up is another response uh, verse. Uh, the response to this one from, also from Isa, the dove's advice, come on now, friend Al, change your facial expression. This is the spring rain. My response to that is, so Al responds, leave me in peace, dove. Tell me to smile again and I will eat you. Again, the owl responds, leave me in peace, dove. Tell me to smile again, and I will eat you. Let's see the next one. And this one is a photograph that I took just a, about a couple of days ago, just in my walking to work. Geminid showers. His good side crash lands on earth. Geminid showers. His good side crash lands on earth. And this one was also taken this past Monday uh, when I was uh, in Ohio to visit friends and family, and the town that I was in just so happened to be in the path of totality. White flag drops. The crowd watches chariots neck and neck. The white flag drops. The crowd watches chariots, neck and neck. And this last one is what I call a found haiku of sorts. Uh, sort of found haiga, found ha haiku of sorts. Uh, where I filled in the last, the first two lines. And the last line is as I found it on uh, on the light pole. Asking the neighborhood birds, have you seen this cat? <laughs> Asking the neighborhood birds, have you seen this cat? And I believe that is it. So uh, thank you again for the uh, opportunity to uh, present my works. Uh, uh, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I don't usually do uh, a lot of uh, Haiga works, but uh, I hope to uh, do more of it in the future, and uh, I, I look forward to learning more. Because uh, again, I've only been doing this for a couple of years, uh, and it's, I really am thankful for the uh, support that I've been getting from the Haiga community so far, and uh, it's been it's been wonderful, and so. Uh, I, I literally joined Twitter almost two years to the day. It was almost seems rather, rather prescient that I happened to join Twitter and and uh, come across the haiku community pretty much right on the day of International Haiku Day. So uh, that, that definitely seemed to, uh, uh, the, the, the stars aligned uh, in that case. So, uh, but again, thank you. And uh, uh, hopefully uh, we'll see you, see you around uh, much, much more in the future. And let's see, how do I, how do I stop sharing? Uh, let's see here. Do pause share? No, stop share. There we go. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you again. <laughs> Thank you, Petro. So uh, we'll move to uh, David Lasky, uh, Seattle artist. David Lasky co-authored the graphic novel Carter Family, Don't Forget This Song, which won Comics Eisner Award in 2013. He has been a graphic novel instructor to a wide range of ages and skill levels. Okay, David. It's, uh, it's all yours. Thank you. Uh, thanks for having me, Richard. And uh, 
it's great to be here. Great to see all of you. Um, is everybody seeing the old pond? Yes. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm mostly a comics creator and I've come to haiku late in life. I've, I've known about it for years and really got into it uh, with the beginning of the pandemic and the lockdown. And I had to learn to teach online. I, I usually would teach comics in, in person. Uh, and I had done so for over a decade. And with the pandemic, I had to learn to teach on Zoom. And I thought, well, if I'm going to teach on Zoom, let's let's teach some fun things that maybe wouldn't be possible trying to gather people in my community. So I started poetry comics and got a lot of students signed up for that. And one of the shorter exercises was a haiku comic and it was this to to adapt basho's famous poem and people in the class liked this assignment better than anything else they liked the haiku comics the best and uh, i this this was my attempt at adapting that poem as well and it took me a while to figure out how to do it and should i show the frog or not show the frog mm. uh, and i realized that there's something here and so summer a few months later summer of 2021 i just taught an all haiku comics class and had a huge response from people uh, around north america and in other countries so i uh I joined in and, and tried to keep up with my own lessons because haiku and haiku comics were fairly new to me as well. So I'll show, I'll read some from that summer. The chipped lip on the old mug. Take your sip from the other side. And there's how it looked as a four panel grid. And I, I kind of recommended to students that they try doing their haiku as a grid like this of four panels, especially so they could have that pause if they wanted to in a silent panel. But I found that students, uh, especially because this is poetry and art, they, they disregarded me and went in all different directions, which at first was like, what are you doing? But then a second later, I was like, oh, this is amazing. Uh, and I delighted in the different things they did with haiku and comics. Entering the room, I think she's there on the bed. But then I turn on the lights. And this was after our cat passed away. And I kept feeling like she's, she's here because I was so used to her being there. There's the full four panels. In the other room, TV plays the Mannix theme. Leanne whistles along. And Leanne later saw this and said, that, that's not true. I would never whistle to the Mannix theme, but I heard it, she did. <laughs> no longer asleep, but not awake either sunlight on the ceiling. I can't think of anything to write about, and yet I write. And this uh, I'm including to show that uh, a haiku comic doesn't have to be reality based. It can be uh, abstract doodles or marks on the page uh, because it's it's a poem. Uh, and it's it's not necessarily about narrative things. So after a few weeks of black and white comics, I went to color with this one. Where is the moon tonight? In the trees, a pink grapefruit. Is it even real? And I felt... Uh, 
for that pink grapefruit, I needed to use color. And then uh, that summer was a success, so I and the students said we want to do more of this. So I kept it going in the fall and tried to teach haiku comics online every season since then, but with a few breaks. Early autumn cool, leaves lit by streetlight, heading to the store. Street lamps light, oh, in the street lamps light, sparkling like melted gold, I walk on wet leaves. And again, uh, a haiku comic can be abstract doodles, and the important thing here was uh, the fall colors uh, and, and maybe the feeling of slickness of walking on those wet leaves. I steam the milk while she sleeps on the sofa, October morning. Late at night, the kitchen light above the stove was left on. The house sits empty. In its yard, yellow whiskers, waiting for a shave. All right, uh, not every haiku comic I do is going to be uh, traditional, uh, and it's, it's up to you to decide if, if a haiku involving Sasquatch is, is traditional haiku or maybe Zapai, which is haiku that is not haiku or Sinryu, Sinryu being haiku about people and their foibles. Zapai is just anything that's not those two, but is in the three line, 17 syllable format. 1967, some have seen you. 2021, I sort of want to Sasquatch, but from a distance. And I'll say I did include the fall colors. So instead of maybe a season word or Kigo, that it's, it's suggested visually, but, but this maybe is up high. Hum of traffic outside my window, rainy Saturday. Putting our coats on, we step out into the cold. And surprise, sunlight. This is a, a Seattle, <laughs> surprising for Seattle. And uh, we've had days of cloudiness and we're expecting the same leaving our apartment, but get sunlight. Stepping off the bus instead of sidewalk, the old trees roots. And again, I'm using that silent beat, um, silent panel as the, the kiriji, the cutting word, but visually um, and, and kind of an abstract texture of those trees roots birds speaking to birds reflections of trees ripple drone of lawn care machines and this is uh set up almost like a a newspaper humorous comic strip brilliant pink flowers glowing in the sun's embrace I will sneeze later. Uh, and newspaper comics often have a, a setup and a punchline, and they will also use that silent panel as kind of making you wait for it a half second longer to get to the punchline. So um, I think part of why haiku comics work is that we're already so used to newspaper comic strips using kind of the same patterns. Uh, but haiku comics, of course, don't have to be funny. They're, they're poems. Do our tears come back after a healing journey as rain at some point? 
And this, uh, I wrote after reading Pablo Neruda's book of questions, or uh, El Libro de las Preguntas, I think it's called in Spanish. And I have to co-credit Pablo Neruda with just inspiring me to write something like this. Uh, for this last one, <clears throat> I was given a prompt, a genre of music for the purpose of healing hearts. And I wrote this haiku and then drew a comic to go with it. A whistling kettle, a girl walking, grass under boots, a fiddle sighing. And after I wrote and drew this, I realized this is, I think about my great aunt Doris who came to America from Russia uh, when she was just a girl of 12, I think, 12 or 13. And uh, she had uh, an anecdote about having to carry water uh, from the well in buckets to her house. And uh, I, so it was interesting for me to discover, oh, that's, that's what this is about. I didn't realize it until I drew the comic. And that uh, comic inspired the, the title of the haiku comic show that John mentioned that's in Thorpe right now on Saturdays. And in May, it will travel to Seattle to push pull in Ballard. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, I am on Instagram at Seattle Lasky, if you'd like to see more of my work. Uh, and I appreciate your, your attention today, this evening. Wow. And of course, David, you were featured at our last CBAC retreat, uh, taught us all haiku comics there, which was uh, a wonderful experience for all of us. It was wonderful for me as well. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you, David. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> if you go to Thorpe, Washington, normally you can get a lot of good fruit also, but the fruit in this case will be the haiku comics. So uh, Michael Dillon Welch is next. Michael has been investigating haiku since 1976. Most of his experience with haiga is in working with other artists, but he has also created many of his own uh, photo haiga, shahai. Michael has directed the Seebeck Haiku Getaway since 2008, runs National Haiku Writing Month, and documents his haiku and related publishing endeavors on graceguts.com. And then after Michael, we'll listen to the, uh, he, watch and listen to the last presenter, Sally Penley. Okay, Michael, you're up. Thank you, Richard. Um, <clears throat> thank you to everyone for, for being here. Um, my little show I'm calling Journey to Haiga um, and uh, I'll explain why I, I, I wish I could do art like so many of the rest of you. Um, I will show you one piece of art uh, that I've made. Um, about 1993, I took a Sumi uh, brush painting class and this was the piece that I liked best. And I had it reproduced green ink on the textured paper and made uh, greeting cards out of them. And I still have some left. Uh, this is actually the only piece I liked. And at the time, I, I realized that to, to meet standard that I would expect myself to meet, um, it would take a lot more work than I felt like I could devote to it. So I decided to devote my attention to writing and to enabling other artists uh, use my haiku if they wanted to. So the following are examples of traditional, modern, and experimental haiga and photo haiga. Uh, and this first set, the artwork is by Gary LaBelle. News of his chemo, meandering paths back from the outhouse. And in this case, he's, he's also got collage and, and whatnot. You'll see some of that plus uh, original art. It's always important to me in, in Haiga that you see the, the hand of the artist. 
And you at least see that um, in the calligraphy here, handwriting. All that's left of the old logging road, the sparrow's song. Objects in mirror are closer than they appear. Your hand on my thigh. Returning boats, the path of the pelican from beach to pier. I love the um, the spontaneousness and even the childlike uh, crudeness of this. Summer heat, two squirrels eat on a wire. Tarnished silver, the only guest eats in silence. A letter home, still that smell of cigarettes. No one in our family smokes, so this is a slightly invented poem. It's actually inspired by a haiku poet who could always smell cigarettes in her letters back in the day. Um, so I made up the home part. The smell of breakfast. Today's paper, warm from the porch. And I always think there should be a, a shift between the poem and the image. Uh, the image in the very middle looks like a, a fried egg, I guess. So that's the breakfast connection. But otherwise, it's quite a leap, I think, between the image and the poem. And this is an example of something called the running hand technique. Uh, in Japanese calligraphy, when you're writing the Japanese vertically and you run the letters together, um, there's a name in Japanese for it, but running hand, where the letters just run into each other. And this is actually in English, starting um, on the right. Um, Gary typed it in so you could also read it. But starting on the right, uh, it says, somewhere in its past. And on the left, a lightning strike to its heartwood. Might be a little hard to, to read, but it, but it is there. First star, a seashell held my baby's ear. And the following examples are more literal uh, representation of the poem with the artwork by Marsha McEachern. A deer leaps, the hunter's closed eye. Morning chill, bag of marbles shifts on the shelf. I like how she added what to me looks like a mouse, even though there was no mouse in the original poem. A table for one, leaves rustle in the inner courtyard. And uh, in, a, in a moment, there'll be another interpretation of the same poem. And that interpretation will be by uh, uh, Kuniharu Shimizu, uh, who has done a lot of uh, uh, computer-generated artwork for many haiku poets around the world, but has uh, been more quiet in recent. Meteor shower. A gentle wave wets our sandals. A table for one. Leaves rustle in the inner courtyard. Drifting into the moon, toy sailboat. Wet beach sand, sandpiper's song, footprints. I love uh, use of the treble clef here to separate the sand from the water. 
And here's some additional examples by uh, with artwork by Mary Rodning Lansi Moss, who's here tonight, Okusai, uh, who's not here, and uh, Terry Ann Carter. Unfinished to-do lists. My roses lure me out into sunlight. Scented breeze. Our conversation takes an unexpected turn. And I, I like this haiga as an example of the leap that's made from the poem to the image or between them, because there's the scented breeze, I guess you, you, you could connect to the scent of the flower, but that's it. Everything else is kind of unique, to the image or unique to the poem, but there is at least that connection, um, but a, a, a nice leap um, between the two. And this is uh, Ron Moss's interpretation of one of my poems. Karaoke night, the stage lights up for the janitor. And I thought I'd uh, play around with Hokusai. It was a pleasure to see the Hokusai exhibit at the Seattle Art Museum a few months ago. Um, this was done before I saw it, uh, but it was a real, real treat to see that. Waves of froth whitening the shoreline. Tired lighthouse. Um, John Boudin in Oregon sent me this card, which uh, it looks like it says 1980, but I think it's 1880. And it's a, a traditional, I think, Central American photo of a family with a uh, a patriarch who had recently died, and he challenged me to write a haiku and this to go with it, and this is what I came up with. Not not a haiga, but it's sort of in the tradition of ekphrastic writing, uh, which has a lot to do with haiga, I think. April Fool's Day, my death poem, still unwritten. And this next poem, I'll let you look at it on the screen. And uh, a poem uh, interpretation by Terry Ann Carter, sort of erotic poem, our rhythmic breathing, a bee slips deeper into the fuchsia. And to wrap up, uh, some of you may know I do a lot of neon Buddha poems. I don't consider them haiku, but I've, I've made hundreds of them into photo haiga, if they're haiga, and uh, this is a few of them. So these are all my photos. 48th birthday, the neon Buddha thinks of angels. Discovering the afterlife, neon Buddha. Riding a unicorn in his dream, neon Buddha. Taking steps to free thinking, Neon Buddha. And these steps are at Seebeck, just in case anyone recognizes. Although I think they've repainted it. It's got a new paint color there now. <laughs> Flying on the wings of nothing, Neon Buddha. For these pieces, I, I, I use the font that looks, sort of looks like calligraphy. Uh, to suggest the hand of the artist, that idea. Thank Taking you. a seat in forever, Neon Buddha. I think this is the last one. Still learning to ride, Neon Buddha. <laughs> Thank you. Wonderful. Hey, thank you, Michael. Yeah, well, next here from Sally Penley. Sally thank Penley you. is a graphic thank designer you. and a left-handed lettering artist. 
Her first love is calligraphy, a journey she began over 40 years ago. And she has long enjoyed making Asian inspired marks with handmade sumi brushes and simple tools to create textural <clears throat> images with sumi ink. Sally is now a full-time working artist and designer at her studio in downtown Olympia. Okay, Sally, it's- Thank you, Richard. Yours. Well, I put this in just because I wanted to point out that I'm gonna focus on art and my choice of media for a lot of my haiga, rather than the haiku, especially after just following Michael <laughs> and his wonderful haiku. We've heard some wonderful haiku tonight. And um, so we'll focus on some art here. Um, I have written haiku for years and years, but always in the high school learned 575 17 syllable until I joined the um, Puget Sound Sumi artists and the Haiga Adventure Group a few years ago. And so now I am better understanding a lot of the various forms. And I particularly enjoy combining humor and senryu. So here are some of, of my um, Haiga. Most of my illustrations are done with Sumi, that wonderful black Sumi ink with a small Sumi brush. Um, sometimes a pointed pen, but mostly a sumi brush. Uh, sometimes I incorporate um, some of my very loose watercolors into, into uh, my haiga. This one over here was done with sumi ink uh, with toilet paper rolls. And then I um, added some sort of earthy watercolors um, to that. Autumn's effervescence bubbles up then down. Um, this little painting over here, I usually use um, Gansai Tambi um, Asian watercolors because they're mineral based and they're very strong. So my base is always that sumi drawing or painting. And then I add a little bit of, of color. This was done in the second year of the um, pandemic. Together yet alone, year two. And then I sometimes use on top of the um, Sumi paintings or drawings, some pastel dust, just to give, for example, for this one over here on the right, just to give that essence of the cherry tree color, but not getting too specific. And that was done in the first, I think in the first month of the pandemic also. And up here um, is just pure Sumi that was used. Mountains emerge from fog and mist, moles. This is just a simple watercolor that frames the haiga or the haiku to create the haiga. Uh, this one uses pastel dust again, but a series of different um, stencils to create the color. And this one over here is just pure Sumi splash because the haiku was about pomo, which is splash art with Sumi ink. Now I go to a retreat every summer for a week uh, just to have a, a bit of a creative blowout. And this last summer, I just had my sketchbook handy and did about 25 very simple haiga um, throughout the week. And um, just really enjoyed doing something uh, that was really quite simple like this. And I like this one, summer morning, sipping coffee in a Christmas mug. And this one was, oh, I'll just go on here. Um, I also do some imagery for other people's haiku. This was a, um, a commission that I did for somebody who wanted to give this person's haiku as a gift in a haiga form. And over here, um, for those of you that have been to haiku or the haiku Northwest in the fall, a couple of years ago, Abigail Friedman was the guest speaker. And I took about seven or eight of her um, haiku and illustrated them. And we made it into a book for her as a gift. And, that, and then I also make mobiles and um, I made some of those into mobile forms as well. 
And then there is um, something that I have come to greatly love, and that is the Japanese postcard art of Edagami. Um, I was introduced to this by our Haiga Adventure Group a couple of years ago. And uh, you can tell I was still writing um, five seven fives here. <laughs> but this one uh, was just done last April when we experienced everything in April from snow to bright sunshine. Drip dry, snow blow, four in one, April. So I have um, studied up on edigami over the past couple of years. I've enjoyed it so much. And now I've taught it several times on Zoom um, the last couple of years. I also make handmade books and I really enjoyed um, writing some kitty haiku. I did about 10 or 12 kitty haiku, all sort of tongue in cheek and canine haiku. And then I, um, I uh, hand bound those into some small books for gifts. And then this kept me busy in the first couple of months of the pandemic when we couldn't go anywhere or do anything. Um, I wrote about 13 haiku about uh, the coronavirus. And um, this was one of my favorites, COVID-19 quandary. Oh, what to wear to the mailbox. And then there were there were two sizes. Some were long like this, um, and they were all hand bound with these hard covers that were um, covered with chiogami paper, Japanese chiogami paper. And then I made some small versions of it too and hand bound all those. And those were my Christmas gifts in 2020. Mm. And then I've done um, several of these themed books um, with haiku by the old masters. Uh, this particular one was on birds. And then I just did some simple, very simple um, sumi wash illustrations above those. And I did one on autumn and I've, I've done several of those. And then these were the collaborative Haiga books that um, Emily and Dorothy were talking about that we did. This was the first one we did in the spring of 2020 called The World Outside My Window in Coronavirus Time. And we each did, and this is Tanrenga, three lines, the first person. We each did our own illustrations too. Three lines, then two lines, three lines, two lines. And then we bound them into these accordion books. And we had so much fun doing that, we went ahead and did another one in uh, early summer of 2020 called Together Apart in Gardens. And this one also was, um, <sighs> see, this one also was Tanringa, I believe. And then we did another one called uh, Visions on My Way Home. And if we have a minute at the end of this, I'll share that with you because it was kind of a fun uh, exercise that we did where uh, the, the person who wrote the first poem, the first verse, uh, the last line of that verse had to start the next one. So it was a challenge for each of us to take on the last line of the previous poem, but it was very fun. I've also done a series of these sumi plaques. These are cradled boards that I painted. They're eight by eight, um, painted them black, and then took these um, handmade paper rounds and sort of tried to bring the essence in these very simple uh, sumi illustrations, the essence of the um, haiku. This one was the Isa mosquito in my ear. Does it think I'm deaf? Those were very fun. And then these were um, done on um, little pieces of calfskin vellum, real vellum. And then I did a couple of my, with my own haiku. And this one over here, um, this image was created with a simple piece of mat board that was dipped in sumi ink and then brought around to almost form an Enso-like effect, and then some Gansai Tombi uh, murky <clears throat> color in the middle, excuse me. 
And as I mentioned, done a lot of mobiles. I took those kitty haiku and canine haiku that I did, and I turned them into a series of mobiles too. Um, and sometimes just a single haiga on a piece. These are really easy to make, very fun. And you can stick them in the mail very easily too to share with people. And pleated scrolls. I love making these. Um, they're wonderful because they, they wrap together to this nice little compact piece over here in the lower left. You can see what they look like. But when they stretch out, there are these uh, wonderful long scrolls that can be hung on the wall. This one over here um, had some pastel dust on the black background. Forgotten glow of the harvest moon, winter solstice. This one for the illustration just had um, a simple little wash of sumi in the background, um, watered down sumi. And this was done in the autumn of 2020. Enticing thoughts of autumn's past. What now? That's it. And um, you can go to my website. I am teaching an introduction to calligraphy class in June, um, but all of my classes are at sallypenley.com. And this is a Fine Art America website where you can see a lot of my images. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> that was great, Sally. Wow. Okay, thank you, Sally. And Thank you also to all the uh, other presenters, very inspiring. And uh, maybe some of us will start taking a part. So. <laughs> okay, the uh, presentation is uh, officially over.